Here's why Trey Young is impossible to defend. While the Milwaukee Bucks shouldn't panic quite yet, Ice Trey just scored the sixth highest scoring total in a conference finals ever by saucing up any defender put in front of him. This kid's a bona fide superstar, so let's break down how Young exposed the Bucks' league best defense in the playoffs and whether or not the Hawks can pull off the series upset. Right quick, only 19% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're looking for consistent NBA breakdowns like this as well as hot takes, you came to the right place. Trey Young scored or assisted on 72 points in Game 1. According to Eliash Sports, that's the most in a conference or division finals game of all time. In the blink of an eye, the 6-1 point guard out of Oklahoma has miraculously ascended into not only one of our game's best point guards, but overall players. Entering the game, Milwaukee had the most efficient defense in the playoffs by a mile, but they clearly hadn't done enough scouting for Young. The pick and roll coverage on him was extremely loose early, and all night long, the Bucks defenders couldn't pick up on the slithery guard's tendencies. He had all the space in the world to either pull up from 30 or make seamless drives into the lane. Shaq was talking about it last night, but the elusiveness of Trey is almost impossible to stop. The third quarter best exemplified that. We were given two plays that no one could see coming. This off the backboard dime to John Collins was dominant. It looked like a floater, but out of everything he did in game one, this next shot was the most special. So how are they going to find an answer for this man right here? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh no, he didn't. With a little shake no, of his shoulder. Didn't. No, he didn't. The three. No, he didn't. Giannis was caught pleading to his guys to not give him enough space to shimmy as the Bucks' defense looked completely lost all night. In a game during the regular season, when Trey had Drew as his primary defender, he shot just one for nine and had five turnovers. But Trey must have watched some film on that game because he had Drew figured out in game one. Holiday made the all-defensive first team and is undeniably the best guard stopper in basketball, but Trey wasn't afraid to put Drew on an island, taking him on in one-on-one -on -one scenarios all game. We'll get to that, but after this and one from Giannis, Holiday hit a three to put the Bucks up five points. It seemed like the heavy favorites were about to make their mark in the opener, but the magic from Ice Trey wasn't done just yet. This shifty momentum crossover shakes off Holiday. Great job by Drew to recover from that saucing and stick with him, but then Trey puts his shoulder into the slightly out of position Holiday, dropping in a ridiculous and one from about 15 feet. The floater game is on point. His shiftiness is ridiculous. And of course, he's a sniper from deep range. So how do you stop that? Here was Drew Holiday after being asked what he could do better on Young. Yeah, I think it'd be more aggressive. Um, sometimes, sometimes going against somebody like Trey, who's a bit lighter, uh, <clears throat> who initiates the contact and gets those calls, um, it's hard to guard. You know what I mean? But I got six fouls. Um, I gotta play smarter. I think I can be more aggressive. I think I started being more aggressive in the second half where uh, maybe trying to speed him up a little bit and, and kind of get him out of his comfort zone. Of course, we have to expect Milwaukee to make some big time adjustments and slow down Young's production somewhat because this Bucks team ranks as the top team in defensive rating by far in these playoffs for a reason. Trey did shoot 21.7% from the field in game seven tied for the fourth worst shooting percentage in NBA history in a game seven. So that's a game that the Bucks could watch to figure out what the Sixers did well. But Trey had a coming out party in game one of the East finals, putting his name amongst some of the greatest players of all time and cementing himself as one of the best in the world. His 48 points tied LeBron James for the most by a player at age 22 or younger in a conference or division finals game. It was Trey Young's sixth 30 point playoff game on the road, the most in a player's first career postseason in NBA history. Don't forget, Ice Trey also had 11 dimes. It's so damn tough to tell whether the man is going to lay it in or lob it up. Young's an excellent and pretty underrated dime dropper. 
You think of him as a shooter and generally a pristine bucket getter, but the guy can also carve up game plans with his passing among the best players in basketball. So fans in the ATL are celebrating after their Hawks took game one, but how good of a chance does Atlanta have of pulling off the upset? Trey's already earned some fans, but if he could pull this off, that'd be legendary. Only thing is, that's a big if, because they're the second team under the current playoff format to make the conference finals without an all-star on the roster since 1984. Only other team to do that since then is the 1994 Pacers. Right now, Young seems like a massive all-star snub though, because he carried the Hawks to this game one victory. The Hawks have some damn impressive role players though, who I'm going to go in depth on in a top 10 I'm posting tomorrow. Subscribe for that top 10, I promise you can't miss it. But what these Hawks are doing is special. The Hawks are the first team to win game one on the road in three series within a postseason since the 1999 Knicks. Ultimately, I still have the Bucks getting the job done in six or seven games, but this series just got a whole lot less predictable. Can't wait to see how things play out in game two. Let me know in the comments if you think Atlanta has a chance in this series, or are you still rocking with the favorites in the Bucks? You're the best for sticking around. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.